bit of a break from all the digging and the groundworks at the uh, off-grid property. I'm now designing the solar system for the garage. The actual structure is being put together by a local company and I'm hoping to have the final drawings for that. And in the meantime, I just need to know the, uh, how many panels we're going to be putting on the roof. The garage, once built, will be totally independent of the house and that includes the solar system. They will interconnect, um, but uh, that is purely on a load basis. The, the solar system itself will have its own inverter, panels and batteries over at the garage because it's going to be the first thing we build and uh, we need power over there for the build. So first things first, I've got an EV charger that I'm going to install and uh, pretty excited about it and uh, we're going to get on with that now. Hi, we're Ian and Julie. Follow us on our tiny homestead and our debt-free project of a lifetime, the building of our shipping container home here in the Pyrenees, and all of this alongside our full-time jobs. So a company called Livoltec uh, reached out to me after watching one of my videos with the, uh, the car charger and said, hey, we do a product, um, it's a smart charger, that basically takes the excess electricity from your solar system and instead of just wasting it or putting it back into the grid, puts it into the car to charge it whenever there's a lot of sun. And at the moment with the 40 degrees C uh, temperatures we're having here in the south of France, um, we have a lot of sun. So um, I'm gonna uh, unbox it, install it and test it out and uh, see how it all goes in this video. Here we go. One thing to say, the shipping of this was very, very quickly. It does come from China, but um, there we'll be having a new distribution center in Germany from this August. So anything purchased will be coming from Europe or your regional distribution centers. Um, so, right, let's get on with the unboxing. We've got the standard user manual and uh, some screws, nuts and bolts, a uh, flange and an RJ45 connector. This is the uh, Type 2 charging cable. Um, now you can select which, uh, which charger you need, they have a variety. Um, in Europe here and on my car, uh, 7 kilowatt is uh, Type 2. So that is the Type 2 charger. I'll just take the box out. Quick check on the packing list to make sure I've got everything. I've got the uh, the four wall plugs, four screws, the connectors or the terminals, uh, a gland, the RS485 um, RJ45 plug, just here, little certificate to say it's all okay, the, uh, the user manual itself, the template just in case you need to put it onto um, a sort of a brick wall or something. I'm going to be mounting it onto my wooden panel where all my other uh, electricals are and the actual unit itself. Right, let's have a look inside. So according to the instructions, there's two screws here that'll take the, uh, the front panel off. And then this slides up. That is just a, uh, a cover panel. And now there's four screws on the top here. And that shows all the inside. So here I'm assuming, because you can't actually see it, is a display. So when it's powered up, I'm hoping to see something there. And then also here, some sort of, uh, I'm not sure, we will see. <laughs> uh, 
and then the internals of the actual unit there. So this is the uh, the actual cable that goes to the car. These three here will go to my uh, my consumer box. So first things first, I'm going to uh, take this off, deinstall it, and give room for the uh, the new unit. Uh, this unit will not be thrown away. Uh, my son has just got a new uh, electric car, so it'll be recycled and it will go off to his garage and I'll install that next week. I've just cut the template out and it fits perfectly in between the two consumer units. I'm going to put the screws in, all the locations of the screws, level them up, just use a bradaw to get the exact location. Just moved it slightly. That's perfect. And then the third one down here. That's one, two, and the third one is here. And to lock it into place, you remove this small rubber cap, and there's a small hole there which is for the lower screw. And you can just put that lower screw in. That's it, secure. Replace the rubber cap. fits quite well. Another reason to install it just in place of the old EV charger is that uh, I don't have to get any more cabling. This cable fits perfectly so I'm just going to uh, connect those up with the uh, I'll crimp some terminals onto there, connect it all up and uh, get it powered up. So a bit of a close-up, neutral live earth, pretty good um, connections here, all bolted in, all screwed in. Uh, they come from my existing feed into the consumer unit to the 32 amp bra breaker there. And that is my solar consumer unit, so that goes directly up to the inverter. One thing I haven't shown so far is this emergency switch here, it's an emergency off switch, so it's normally twist it out and if you need to you just press it in and it shuts off all power. So I'm just going to check my uh, connections using my uh, multimeter. So set into volts, AC. I'm going to turn on the 32 amp breaker but the emergency switch is off. So across my neutral and my live I have, if you can see it, probably not, 234 volts, so that's all good. 
So now the main panel is all fitted. There's volts to it. I'm going to go and get the front panel, connect that back up with this uh, ribbon cable and follow the instructions to connect to the uh, LiveLaTeX uh, app on the iPhone and uh, see how it goes, see if it can charge. I'm going to put the, uh, the cable back on and then fit this back on. There. Let's see. I'm going to turn him on. No power because of the emergency switch. I'm going to twist the switch on. Oh, so now we know what that ring was for. It's um, a light. I've buttoned the unit up, all screwed in, front panel on. Um, I've installed a, a, just a small hook over here for the cable. Uh, there's plenty of cable so it'll reach outside of the garage or into the garage, whichever way I park my car in here. Um, nice type 2 plug that can either be housed in the front of the unit which it uh, basically is dragged in or we have the rubber cap just here but uh, I'll keep it plugged in like this now as I said in thought in earlier on in the video on the unboxing that there was going to be a display unit here there's nothing here it's purely on the ring here so when I put on power it'll take a little time just to to kick in there we go so it's green at the moment so that means it's ready to charge so all the interaction between the Levoltec EV charger and the car is done via their app so I'm going to walk through the app get the, this plugged into the car and get it charging so I have an iPhone so just go to the Apple Store and if you've got Android go to Google Play Store um, the application is called ltk.evc, uh, not really a snappy name, but um, I'm no doubt they'll change that once all the development has uh, been done. So um, download that, click on it, and it brings up the, uh, the application. It comes up with a login screen, but you don't need to do any login or create an account. You just go to a local mode, which is just under the login. Click on the local mode. It comes up with Bluetooth mode, so click on Bluetooth. And then that brings up all the available devices. We only have the one and um, it uh, comes up with its serial number. So click on the serial number and it'll start talking. So that is it basically. It's now connected to the EV charger. Um, I can plug it into the car now, press start up and we're all ready to go. And then when you plug the EV charger into the car, the car now is trying to talk to the EV charger and it'll flash yellow. So the two units are both awaiting that command from the app. So as soon as you um, plug the car in, the EV charger starts talking to it. So it's flashing blue and that's saying, I'm ready to charge. So now I press start up, start up. They're still talking to each other, click, and the car will go blue. The EV charger also goes to a constant blue circle on the unit. So that's saying they're both charging. And even though it's not coming from my solar panels, or, although it is actually, it's um, because it's drawing off the solar but not the excess, it is drawing 7.62 kilowatts. So seven kilowatts is the EV charger. It's also drawing from my batteries here, which I don't want it to do. Um, and that is when, once this becomes compatible with the RS485 cable, it will only take the excess solar. So I'm hoping with the uh, Levoltec uh, system, all of that will work perfectly. So a little bit more playing around. If I set 
my maximum charge rate to say three kilowatts. I know that I was actually drawing about four and a half kilowatts from the solar. So I can go back to start, start up, press go, it'll now charge with the car. And in theory, it should only draw three kilowatts and that should be plenty just off my solar panels. There we go, 3.65. So there's nothing coming from the battery and nothing coming from the grid. But you need to keep an eye on the sun at that point because uh, as soon as the cloud goes over, you need to rush back out here and turn it off. So this is a system diagram that I envisage for our garage. So picture our garage there instead of the house. Um, the solar panels will probably have uh, 18 on the roof. We'll feed the Levoltec uh, off-grid hybrid inverter and that will talk to its own battery systems. And I think we can get up to three times five kilowatt batteries per inverter. Um, that'll be enough for the garage for sure. The EV charger will chat with the inverter via the RS485 and will take on in using dynamic mode as they call it. It'll take all the excess solar power after the batteries have been charged and after supplying any needs we might have and that'll put that into the charger and into the car. I hope you found that uh, useful. It's great getting back into schematics and uh, putting boxes together and seeing if they all work. Um, I tried for a long time trying to get uh, that uh, EV charger to work with my inverter via the RS485 because uh, you know the, ma the main mode I wanted it to work in was that dynamic mode. But um, with talking to Livoltec, um, they said, no, not at the moment. It's not compatible with third party inverters. So um, I'll have to see whether I can test it out with one of their inverters in the future because, uh, yeah, it, it's something that I must have for the car. Right, we're away for now for about a week, back in the mountains, back uh, supporting a group of cyclists. And then once we get back, we'll be back up the off-grid plot and get a little mini digger out, the Kubota tractor, and just try and square off all that groundwork in readiness to start the footings. So please, if you like this video, put that thumbs up. Drop us a comment below on the EV charger, the Livold Tech. I'll put all the details down there in the uh, description as well. Uh, check their website out. Uh, it, it's a great alternative to some of the other normal uh, uh, guys out there. So uh, check them out. And we will see you in the next video. Bye for now.